ask for questions. Uh, Brian is very interesting and very useful. Uh, usually, when we talk about population and climate change, but not usually, maybe traditionally or some people, is the impact of population size on climate change, on the emission and so on. So we talk about reduction of population growth, the impact on emission and so on. But I think uh, the work you presented and uh, the work of Volcan Roots make a different contribution. Rather than talking about from population size to emission, you talk about the importance of demographic information in understanding climate change, in understanding the vulnerability of the population, in understanding the exposure of population to the climate change, and also how to make adaptation and mitigation. And we use all the demographic information to understand that. I think it is a very important contribution rather than simply talking about population growth, effect, emission, and so on. So congratulations for the work. Thank you very much. Thanks for that comment. And I, I would say that I, I think that's an important thing that's changed. You can see even in the conclusions that I listed from our book, the book was kind of oriented towards this question of if you slowed population growth, how much benefit would that be? That was sort of the dominant question at the time. I mean dominant among the very small group of people who thought about it. Um, and so the book got oriented that way. You would not write the same book today. It's just a much wider and I think probably more interesting set of questions about how demography matters to many different aspects of climate change. Thank you very much, Brian, both for the work, for the pioneering 15, 20 years ago, and for sticking with it, making this real to the climate change community. I've been puzzled by a paper in science by Pakala and Sokolo on the nine wedges that need to be affected to change the future of climate change. And demography is completely absent from that paper to the best of my recollection. How do you account for the influence of that paper given that it simply doesn't even recognize the existence of demography? I can, I'm baffled by why it's been so influential. Do you have any comment on that? Well, I mean, I think it's reflective of um, I mean, this is still a general feature of, the clim of climate change research and certainly policy, is that uh, typically population is not included. Um, I assume primarily because it's a controversial topic. I think also in some cases <coughs> it's um, it's just, in fact, not as important of a policy lever for some ways of looking at the problem than other things. Uh, for the Pakala and Sokolo, the Wedges paper, um, I mean, I know them, I talked to them about it, I went and presented there. We even estimated in our own emissions work that uh, climate or um, demographic changes could constitute something like one to two wedges, right? So, uh, and you know, a wedge is like a certain amount of emissions reduction between now and 2050. And they uh, listed a whole bunch of ways you could get one wedge from nuclear and another wedge from bioenergy and one other from energy efficiency. And then you needed something like six or seven or eight or something to put us on a path toward limiting climate change. So the, the conclusion that, well, you could get one or two if you uh, met unmet need for, for, for family planning, for example, um, was important in that it sort of put it in context. Would not solve the problem by any means, by itself, but it would help and if it was going to be a benefit anyway. Now that idea has still appears in the literature. I, I think there's a paper that's just out now from some people at Brown who uh, look at this. Um, I think there's another one floating around, actually, 
including the Princeton group in it, um, that, uh, that looks at something similar. Uh, but I don't think ever this connect, this more explicit policy connection to emissions is going to be a dominant theme just given the, the, the controversy over it and the tendency to focus on technological approaches. Thank you. Uh, one small last question, if any, before we go. Thank you very much for a fascinating talk, Ryan. Um, you made a point about spatial population projections not having characteristic detail. Um, does that mean that people who do subnational projections where the, the data is need to get together with the people who do gridded population work and try and uh, communicate the information from one set of projections that we know about and we have data for and we're extending with, with uh, uh, many of the other variables other than age and sex in, um, or do we join teams of environmental scientists and try and show them how demography works? How, how does it happen? Um, yeah, I think, I think that would be a good idea. Um, I mean, we're going to try to do something over the next year or so jointly um, here with, with VID. Um, and I think it's both a data and a methodology question. Uh, methods that work well for small areas won't necessarily work well for large areas, either because of the scale or because they may require driving very sort of right-hand side variables that you're not going to have available at the global level to drive your projections, right? So if you've got housing markets and employment and so on, driving your spatial population projection, that may be fine for a single city. But if you do it globally, then you need a global housing market model and a global you know, labor model that, with spatial differentiation just to drive your spatial population projection. So it's a real, it's a, both a methodological question and a data issue. Um, and the, the one other thing I would add about this is it's still an open question, what scale actually matters? So we're producing them at a gridded scale, but for different applications, it may not matter that much from one kilometer to the next what the population density is, or maybe it's from 10 kilometers to the next 10, or 100 to the next 100, uh, depending on the heterogeneity of the hazard um, or other conditions that, that uh, affect the outcome. So even that question is, is open. Well, let's thank uh, Brian for this uh,